You had the Lone Ranger, you had Buck Rogers, you had Cowboys and Indians, and then out of nowhere came Superman. When I first saw this book slide across my desk, I was blown away. Well, the comic book is a copy of Action Comics number one. Action One introduced the world to Superman, which was the first superhero ever. Everything about him has been copied in some form or fashion by many other superheroes. The cape, the colors, uh, truth, justice, the American way. Siegel and Schuster shopped Superman around for years to uh, the newspapers trying to sell it and nobody was interested. And you get two, two individual young teenagers, sons of immigrant parents. And they were looking for a new idea and off the cuff they decided let's try the Superman idea. To create this character from another planet, you have to put yourself in the mind space of 1938. The country's been through a horrible depression. There's bread lines, there's unemployment, and this guy comes along with a cape and leotards and he's out to save America. He's out to, to, to fight the bad guys. And so they put him in the first copy of Action One, put this fantastic classic cover on, which they didn't realize at the time. And this character comes to life. And it ended up selling amazing. Every kid wanted to be Superman. The production for Superman was roughly 200,000 books. Immediately they were thrown away. There were paper drives. And that's where a lot of them went, was to help support the war efforts. Comics from the 30s are very rare anyway. And kids read them. So the books got ragged, they got handed down from brother to sister, cousins, you name it. Moms throwing them out, people cleaning out their houses over 50 years. Up to the point when comic books, as a, as a hobby, started to take hold, people started to place value on this book. There was a gentleman, 1938, buys a copy of Superman, Action Comics number one off the newsstand. And he lived in a fairly high altitude area of West Virginia, kept the book in a cedar chest. It was stored under the most ideal conditions, which for comic books or paper in general would be four things, cool, dry, dark, and as little air as possible. It was discovered in the late 70s, early 80s by another gentleman who had ran an ad in a newspaper buying comic books. Went over to look at the books, as he's going through the pile, he gets towards the bottom of the pile, and there's an Action Comics number one. He held the book for a few years, decided to, to sell the book to this prominent dealer. That dealer held the book for approximately 30 years and sold it to me. The gentleman pulled it out of the bank vault. We read his bank, and I knew right then there was something extremely special, not just a copy of Action Comics number one, the copy of Action Comics number one. And, and I'm like floored. The emotion was overwhelming. I've seen a lot of action ones in my day, but I had no idea how beautiful this book was going to be. CGC is the comic industry's first independent third-party grading system. Started in 2000, and since then we've graded 2.5 million comic books. We've established an industry standard of grading and restoration check that didn't exist before. This was very important for the safety of collectors because prior to that, we had a grading standard, but it was left open to the interpretation of whoever was selling a book. It could be overgraded or undergraded, maybe restoration wasn't disclosed. CGC allows that protection for the buyer, which makes collecting comics a lot safer. CGC will grade a book from 0 to 10, with 10 being perfect and 0.5 being poor. We also have other aspects that determine value, such as page quality, pedigree status, and the census. The census is very important, too, because not only do we grade each comic book, but we record how many copies we grade. And so a collector can determine how many copies exist of a particular book, in a particular grade, and this drives value more than anything. With 200,000 books produced, nearly, that's nearly a quarter billion books. Only two exist with white pages. There's 34 unrestored copies left in existence. And then you have this book here, which defies all odds. Well, we've graded over 60 copies, and half the ones we've graded are restored. And of the 60 copies that we've graded, only seven are better than 6.0 on that scale of one to 10. This Action One is a certified 9.0 with white pages, the highest graded copy Action One in the world. So this book is incredibly rare in this grade, uh, almost unheard of. One of, the, one of the greatest books I've ever seen in my career. Although I'd love to hold the book forever, um, that's not what I do. I chose eBay as, a, as, as the form in which to list this book because of their worldwide reach. I felt this book deserves to have um, as much publicity as possible because of what it is. 
I'm hoping that the next person can enjoy it as much as I do. I'd love it if a museum purchased this book for all to see. It's going to be hard to say what this book eventually sells for during the course of this auction. There's really no limit to it. Uh, this is the first time this copy has ever been made publicly available for sale. We involved the Christopher Reeves Foundation, probably the most iconic Superman people can remember now, and uh, his foundation will benefit as a direct result of the sale of this book. Up until 30 years ago, Norman Rockwell paintings were $7,000, and now they're $4 million. It's just a matter of time. When any collectible hits that threshold of mainstream collectibleness, it has exploded into uh, the pop culture scene of America, where now you've got the movies, TV shows, licensing, toys, everything. So Action One as Superman pretty much started all of that. To have the opportunity to own it has been an honor for me. Any of the Golden Age keys have such an inherent value, there's just so few of them. And, and it's the cream of the crop, and it doesn't get any better than this.